All right, so what I have here is a broken tail. And whether it's a sailfish tail, a tarpon tail, it doesn't really matter. But this is the way we would fix it after we send the repair kit to the customer. Sometimes they fall off the wall at the customer's house. Sometimes they arise just damaged, but the customer would rather fix it and get a credit versus sending it back and having us fix it. So uh, I'm gonna show how we do it here. Um, the cardboard piece that arrives to you won't have this spray on it. This is a mold release, which is a non-sticky substance. The one that you have will have wax on it, because if I send this, then it'll dry before you get there, and there's a chance that this epoxy skull won't stick to it. But what we have here is two parts, which you'll receive. Two parts of the epoxy skull. They're a 50-50 mix, so what you want to do Pull it out. Hopefully you can get it out. And pull out two equal parts. And then start kneading them together. So these are about equal parts. It doesn't have to be exact. It's just a one-to-one -one ratio, so something close. Mix them up. Do a little magic. We're looking for a style color. That's why they make them two different colors, so that by the time you're done, you can see that they are one piece. There you go. One solid color. You know it's been mixed. One more time, just to make sure. Now what we're trying to do here is we're trying to create the basic shape of this tail point where it's been broken off. And at the same time, slide some up under the existing piece. What this does, it allows us to have something for the new piece to hold to. So as you can see here, shaping it, trying to give it a shape. You want to try to make sure that it's about flush with the existing edge. You don't want to have as little amount of edge as you possibly have even though we'll be able to sand it. Pretty much probably any fisherman or person that's getting this will have a little knife. So we use paring knives here. They work really well. Now what I'm going to do is just come through and I'm using my spit. You don't have to use your spit. You could use water. This is a non-toxic toxic substance, so you don't have anything to worry about as far as chemicals. Well, maybe you do. Water works just fine. But they say it's non-toxic. So basically all I'm doing right now in this step is just getting my basic shape form. Once I have the basic shape form, we are done with this step and we'll let it dry for about, it says half an hour to an hour. I say let it dry overnight. Letting it dry overnight or at least let's say two or three hours will just ensure that when you go to push on it, it doesn't bend or flex in any way. It'll be completely solid, rigid. We'll be able to sand it out so that you have one complete piece. And then we take the next step. So I'll be back in a little while. See you soon. All right, so I just spent five minutes sanding this down thinking I was recording, and I wasn't. So that kind of stinks. But I need to get this out to a customer, so what I'm gonna do is just recreate what I did. You're gonna have all of your base here. You're gonna have all, it's all gonna be raised up and where you had shaped it. You're gonna have edges on here. What you do is you come through sand, you sand, 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 and then you wanna taper it on the sides. Taper, 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 taper down. You'll have like a square here and you want to continually sand with your 80 grit on an angle. Sand, sand, sand all the way to where it's tapered so that when you look at it, you don't see a big block here. You're trying to create an angle. You do it on both sides. Sand, 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 sand. So that you're shaping it and you're taking off your hard angle. You don't want to sand underneath 
tail part that's still there, the actual part that wasn't broke. You wanna make sure that that piece is connected because that piece is connected to this piece. So this piece is connected to this piece and that's what gives it its rigidity. Now when you sand the top, because you're gonna to wanna to sand it and make this all flip, you wanna put your fingers under here like this. You wanna sand, 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 sand. When you're sanding, you'll start to see that where you're sanding becomes light. Your reliefs or your valleys will be darker. You are wanting to get rid of all those reliefs and valleys so that you have a smooth, even finish. You can see here where I've already taken the time to do that. The time was probably, took me probably three, four, five minutes to get it all the way to where I feel comfortable with it. You can fine tune it as much as you want. Everybody has their own personal preference about how perfect it needs to look. When it's up on the wall, eight to 10, 12 feet away from you, you're not gonna be able to see any little minor reliefs or valleys that you didn't sand out. All right, and so the next step that I failed to record the first time, which I'm gonna show again, is where your epoxy sculpt meets your paint. You wanna come in here with the 180 or 220, depending on what we sent you, and just do fine, fine circles, and basically what you're doing is taking your edge off of here so there's no edge. As you're doing that, you'll see the paint that's connecting to the epoxy sculpt start to disappear. You'll see your gel coat start to show up, which is the white, the gel coat. And you're basically just trying to make it so there's no lip or no edge. And so when you run your finger across it, you should feel nothing. Now, if you feel just a little something, it's all right. Again, it's gonna be up on your wall far away. You're not gonna notice really that much. But if you really wanna get super technical, if you look and see the dark paint still versus the sanded area, that's the area that has not been sanded. So you wanna work that area. And try not to go too high up the tail because the farther you go up, the more paint you gotta use. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and airbrush this. We send the paints out to you. Most people don't have an airbrush to their house. So you're just gonna use a small brush of some sort to apply it. The normal steps are silver. And then if there's a color that's in your tail other than black, which this one has a little bit of teal, which I'll push with the airbrush, and then black. Then I'll show you the technique with a with paintbrush too, just so you can see what we would do, or you would do if you don't have the airbrush capability, but have the paint and some, and some uh, paint then. All right, so I'll be right back. So when I started recording this, um, I was talking um, as I was painting it, or as I was about to paint it here, but uh, the, the, the fan was too loud in the background. Our, our paint booth fan just so loud when you turn it on, and when we spray, we got to turn it on. So what I'm doing here is I am uh, actually spraying some silver on here, um, which is uh, heavy metal silver, and it kind of just gives it a nice even layer over there. You'll have some silver yourself, and um, you should be able to brush it on just to put your, your base color down um, underneath whatever color comes next. If you are spraying a fish that has multiple colors, let's say it has some silver back uh, underneath, and then it has some teal or something, um, that's kind of similar to what we're doing here. But many, um, many fish don't have anything but silver and black really in their fin colors. So I sprayed the teal right there, um, coming on the edges and just trying to give it a nice little blend um, going in, going up and, and into the base. And now I'm pushing a little bit of black. And what you'll be doing is taking your brush because most people don't have an airbrush at the house. So if you're just using a brush system, then um, all you'll really be doing is, is taking the brush and brushing your silver on and then brushing the color on if there is a color other than black. And then once you have the black, um, you'll have some black paint, you can brush it on if it's real heavy there or if it's just the edges that are uh, needing the black, then we've provided you with a uh, black paint marker. Uh, black paint markers are pretty cool. They have actually a gloss built into them and um, to have the same look as the, the rest of the, of the fish tail. Once you get that done, uh, some people might have like a canned spray paint or like a canned clear. I can't ship the canned clear. I'm just not allowed to ship canned clear. Um, however, if you have some, you could spray that right on the end and it would give it a nice even clear coat. Or um, you could also use your 
Um, wife's clear coat for her fingernails, as funny as that sounds. Um, sorry I went out of the view range there, but really all I'm doing is just taking the, the paint marker and pushing it on the edge uh, just to tighten it up and make it look uh, evenly uh, uniform everywhere so that the finished product is. is and when, I'm sorry right there as well, you kind of see in a glare of silver. Uh, that's just the metallic when it's not clear coated yet. It's got this, this, this little bit of um, reflection that comes off the metal. It just happens to be the way the light's hitting it there. But um, yeah, I believe that's pretty much about as about as all you really need to know to get it as well as it needs to be to, to be able to put it up on the wall and not really tell that it was ever broke. Um, and if you do have any more questions, we're always available to answer any of your questions. Just give us a shout. We're, we're happy to help you out. We appreciate you taking the time to fix it. Um, and um, we hope that it looks perfect. And we'll go from there. All right, here I am using a clear coat, a spray can clear coat just to show you the final final step here. Um, we use Krylon. We actually use it for our eyes. We see how it kind of took away the metallic silver layer there that we were getting. And uh, there it is. There's your finished product. I hope yours looks good or if not better than ours. And uh, thank you for watching the video. Take care.